Out in the Bay of Bengal lies a string of islands. Thousands of kilometers away from major land masses live the most isolated group on Earth. For tens of thousands of years, they've lived almost entirely cut off from other populations. Intriguing questions can be asked about their DNA using modern analyses techniques. What are the major tribes of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands? How distinct are the Andamanese Islanders from the rest of the world? And what unique signatures are hidden within their DNA? Now, when you think of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, you probably think of one group in particular, the individuals from North Sentinel Islands. Yeah, it was killed by the natives. North Sentinel Island, which is a really unusual place because they branched off from Africa 60,000 years ago and they've been living on this one small island the size of Manhattan. And as well as we know, there's only about 39 of them left, somewhere around there. Yeah. They've become famous, or rather, shall we say, infamous for their strict no-visitor policies. While their story is fascinating, they are only one part of a bigger picture, because scattered through the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are other indigenous tribes which have a similar history to the individuals from the North Sentinel Island. And incredibly, we have their DNA. That allows us to tell a story that is absolutely mind-blowing. It's a story that rewrites parts of our understanding of early human migration, and what it means to be isolated for millennia. Let's set the scene. Who are the indigenous people of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands? First off, this is not just a few islands. The Andaman and Nicobar Island chain is made up of 836 individual islands. And they're not huddled together either. The northern part of the islands, the uh, Andaman Islands, and the southern part of the islands, uh, the Nicobar Islands, have a distance of over 150 kilometers which is roughly the same distance as New York is from Philadelphia. So it's no surprise that the tribes that live here have had limited contact with the outside world. But more amazingly, individual tribes that have lived on the Andaman and Nicobar Islands have had limited contact with each other as well. And of these islands, only 31 are permanently populated. Let's talk about the tribes themselves. Within the Andaman and Nicobar Island chain, there are six indigenous tribes. Four of these tribes are indigenous to the Andaman Islands, and therefore we call them the Andamanese based on geographic location. These are the Jawara, the Ong, the Sentinelese, the individuals from the North Sentinel Island, and the Great Andamanese. In the south half of the island chain, the Nicobar Islands, we find the Chompen and the Nicobarese. Native might not be accurate in describing these groups, as the Nicobaris are a more recent arrival and are currently the largest tribe on the Nicobar and Andaman Islands. I think the Nicobaris and the Champen deserve their own video, and I might make that in the future, so let me know if you'd like a video on that. It's also important to understand and know of the people we've lost. The Jangil are another tribe who went extinct in the 1920s. From linguistic data, we understand them to be similar to the Jawara. However, we cannot really prove that without DNA. Quite uh, surreal, a whole branch of humanity gone within the last hundred years. Now, speaking of language, we need to address this first before we move on to DNA. I know you're here for DNA and we're getting there, but let's talk about language because that's another important anthropological marker that carry some context of history and ancient connections. And the languages spoken on the Andaman Islands are, well, very odd. Each of the four individual tribes speak their own unique language. They're what we call language isolates. The languages are not known outside of the immediate tribe that speaks them. The great Andamanese people speak great Andamanese. The Jawara and Ong speak their own language, known as Jawara and Ong, respectively. However, some linguists believe Jawara and Ong belong in their own family, called Ongan. And that's due to some of the shared words you're seeing right here. And the Sentinelese people speak their own language, which we can refer to as Sentinelese. However, we cannot discern how related they are to Ongan, 
or Great Andamanese, we can't really study this for obvious reasons. Linguists believe that these Andamanese languages originated from a single parent language called Proto-Andamanese. Now, did Proto-Andamanese split into Great Andamanese and Ongan, or did Great Andamanese and Ongan evolve naturally and separately? We don't know, and the linguists are still uh, debating and assessing this question. It's a fascinating question. Language does tell us a lot. But I know why we're all here. Let's get into the DNA and what we found from uh, biomarkers. This is where the story goes from fascinating to absolutely epic. When scientists first analyzed the DNA from the Great Andamanese and the Ong people, they found some stuff that made them do a double take. First, they looked into the mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA, as a very clean way of tracing maternal ancestry throughout the entire human species. All humans belong to different mitochondrial groups we call haplogroups. Haplogroups are like huge ancient genetic clans that we all belong to based on our heritage, and everyone belongs to one group or one subgroup. The Ongan Great Andamanese people belong to haplogroups M31 and M32. Very interestingly, these haplogroups are also found in some isolated pockets of humans outside of the islands, such as some tribes in India, but these are seen seldom anywhere else. So the M31 and M32 haplogroups are almost entirely exclusive to the Andamanese people. So that's the maternal line, but what about autosomal DNA inherited from both parents? This study in 2006 took nine short tandem repeats, which are a brilliant tool for population genetics. Think of STRs as a genetic stutter. They're short sequences of DNA, like CATG, that get repeated over and over again. The number of repeats in STRs varies between populations, and STRs have a very high mutation rate. So there are a fascinating low-cost method of evaluating how related different groups of people are to one another. The reason they mutate very quickly is also very interesting. Because of these constant repeats that occur after another, CATG, CATG, the Duplication machinery can get confused and make mistakes. They can add or remove parts of the section, which gives rise to variances we geneticists can use to isolate different people into different groups based on their STRs. The researchers looked at nine STRs from the Great Andamanese, Ong, their southern neighbors, the Nicobaris, and several other groups from outside of the island chain, including Dravidian-speaking Indians, Southeast Asians, and Africans. And what they saw was pretty striking. You see this? The Ong and the Great Andamanese are way away from everyone else, forming their own little cluster. They are incredibly distant from everyone else, including their neighbours to the south, the Nicobaris, who are, at the same time, extremely close to the Southeast Asians. In contrast to Dravidian-speaking Indians and Africans, the Andamanese share very little genetic signature, suggesting an ancient divergent point tens of thousands of years ago. This confirmed that the Andamanese are profoundly different from most other human beings, including their neighbours to the south, the Nicobaris. Their ancestors arrived, sea levels rose, and they were genetically encapsulated. And we're happy. <laughs> We have everything we need here. The trees bear a lot of fruit, and the flowers are magnificent. Here, everything is beautiful and peaceful. We like sharing everything. We are all together. And we only hunt what we need. But before, there were no strangers here. Today, they're getting closer and closer to us. A more recent paper came out a couple years ago, 
which included data from the great Andamanese, Nicobaris, Champagne, who are very elusive, the Jawara, and the Ong people. So five out of the six major tribes of the Andamanese and the Nicobar Islands. No prizes for guessing why they couldn't get data from the North Sentinelese. And you'd think with all this data, the researchers would collate really nice plots and really good results that are very clear. Um, that wasn't quite the case. I'll give this plot as an example. This is a bit messy, and if you're red uh, green colorblind, I apologize. I did not pick the colors for this plot. But stick with me, because it's quite interesting when we break down the results. Think of each color as an ingredient in a genetic recipe. Each color represents an ancient lineage. On the x-axis, we have the three Andamanese tribes, the Great Andamanese, Ong, and the Jawara. See how the Great Andamanese recipe is made up of a lot of red and green. Now compare that to Jawara and Ong. They share a lot of blue, and there's pink-specific genes from the Jawara and yellow-specific uh, variants from the Ong. This tells us something quite loud and clear. The Jawara and Ong are much more similar and have a much more recent shared ancestry than they do with the great Andamanese people. And the plots get more confusing with the more people they add. The researchers mix in the Nicobaris and the Champagne for another plot, and I have some great doubts on the accuracy. I do not believe the researchers took into account, for example, more recent admixture events. I think that's led to some errors in the assessment of these results. For that reason, I'm not really going to discuss those. But I've left the paper in the, the description below. Please check that out if you're interested. I, I'd prefer to take my time and read more on this topic and produce a follow-up video than display any inaccuracies. And that leaves us to one last question. What about the genetic diversity within these isolated tribes? Or, in another way, how much inbreeding have they done? To answer this, the researchers brought out the big guns, the Hardy weinberg equilibrium. These two legends gave us a mathematical baseline to measure evolution. Let me explain, the hardy weinberg equilibrium is pretty straightforward. It's a way of dicting frequencies of genes or alleles within a population, assuming that population is not undergoing evolution. The equation appears as p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1, where p squared is the homozygous dominant of the allele, 2pq is the heterozygous version of the allele, and q squared is the homozygous recessive version of the allele. Each of these three versions of the alleles will have a frequency within the population, and the combination of this frequency will equal 1. When they ran the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium on the STRs, they found a major deviation. They saw a lot more homozygosity, so P squared and Q squared, in contrast to heterozygosity, 2PQ. This is a classic sign of high levels of inbreeding, and that makes perfect sense. In a small, isolated population, you run out of new people to have kids with. Over generations, the proportion of heterozygous individuals, or heterozygous alleles, within individuals, will decrease. Now, it's worth noting there's a lot more literature on this subject. I'm already digging into some new research on this, and some older papers as well, because I do want to make a follow-up on this video topic, and make an alternative video for the Nicobaris people, uh, and possibly even the Champagne. If you want to be notified for these upcoming videos, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you so much for tuning in, and see you next time for more science.